Dozens of Boeing 777 jetliners are grounded now after a catastrophic engine failure on a United Airlines flight out of Denver. Terrified passengers saw this, can you imagine, out of their windows shortly after takeoff as debris from the shattered engine rained down on neighborhoods below. The engine explosion happened just moments after departing Denver and this flight did land safely, thank God, with 241 passengers and 10 crew members on board. United Airlines has already pulled all 24 planes with those Pratt and Whitney 4000 engines from its fleet and the NTSB has opened an investigation into the incident. Back with us now is Alan Armstrong, who is a, a pilot and an aviation attorney. Um, Alan, just here in the last hour, you walked us through uh, this jet engine and really, you know, what could have gone, what did go wrong, what uh, could, what else could have gone wrong. Tell us a little bit about exactly what happened. Well, from the reports we've received so far, Brianna, what we have is we have a crack, a transverse crack in a compressor blade. And this is is perpendicular to the leading edge of the blade. And when that break happens, this remainder is going to depart and it has two avenues. It can, it can try to depart laterally, but you've got this armor belt here that protects the fuselage from a, from a penetration, or it can go aft into the, into the engine itself. So a jet engine has been called a cylinder a cylinder of spinning sabers. And look at this, this is what you have. You have the cylindrical device here with these compressor blades that spin at alarming speeds that compress air back into the engine and that compressed air is ignited with fuel and with ignition and that results in propulsion. That's how the, how the jet is propelled forward. But the problem that we have in this situation is, is we have a crack in a blade that is propelled after, afterward and it destroyed the engine. It just destroyed it. Just destroyed it and was lucky to not go into the fuselage. You mentioned last hour that when it comes to these fan blades that we're looking at, I mean, they are in operation for tens of thousands of flight hours. So they're titanium, which is strong, but obviously over time there can be some weakness and it seems like it's very much a visual uh, inspection of these fan blades. Is there something else, something better that can be done to make sure something like this doesn't happen again? It would seem that we would need to improve our um, analysis and detection of these problems, these incipient problems in these blades because they're under trem tremendous pressure. I mean, think about the gravitational forces, the G-forces, the, the centripetal force propelling these blades outward if they depart. So yes, we need to find better ways, uh, scanning electron micros microscopy or ultrasound or something to detect incipient cracks early before we have a catastrophic failure like, like we did on Saturday. Is this something that, you know, we saw coming? Is this something that was on the radar of airlines and manufacturers? The short answer is yes. The short answer is yes. Uh, February 13, 2018 and December 4th of 2020, we've had two previous incidents remarkably similar to this or virtually identical to it. We've been playing Russian roulette with this problem for years now and it's finally catching up with us. It's time to do something about it. Alan, this happened not long after takeoff, which is, you know, thank goodness uh, for the luck for those folks on board. This plane was initially heading for Hawaii. It would have been over the ocean for hours. What would have happened if this was over the ocean hours from an airport? Yeah, the, the concern there is if you have a, a, a catastrophic failure at altitude, the aircraft is not going to be able to maintain altitude on one engine, so it's going to drift down. And there are drift down procedures to a point where the aircraft can maintain altitude. The question becomes whether the aircraft can actually make its destination. They've done, they do studies and they do analyses and they, they noodle out how this is supposed to work. And theoretically, the airplane would have made it either back to Hawaii or returned back to the mainland one way or the other at the halfway point.
So this is analyzed very carefully in aviation. We plan for these eventualities and these emergencies. Oh, that is some good news there. Um, Alan, thank you so much. Alan Armstrong, really appreciate that tutorial. And next, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo.